Okay, so in the previous video, we had a look at um, a basic introduction to what limits means. Again, we saw that, uh, just a quick recap, that if I have that the limit of x tending to a of f of x, if I have an answer L, it means three, this expression means three things, okay? That when x is close to a, when x is close to a, fx is close to L. Okay. When x, and I'm writing very ugly, forgive me. Okay. When x gets closer to a, fx gets closer to L. Okay. And then finally, fx can get as close as possible to L by getting close enough by X getting close enough enough to A okay and uh, then we saw two examples in the previous video I had a look at the function uh, x squared okay fx is equal to x squared and we looked at the number 4 and we asked ourselves what happens when x is close to 4 okay what would happen to x squared and we saw that it would be close to 16 when we get closer to 4 we get closer to 16 we can get as close to 16 as possible by getting close enough to 4 but not just that we also saw that when we actually substitute 4 into x we get 16 so this is what we expected to happen what we expected to happen and this is what actually happens at x equal to 4. Now this gives us as mathematicians the means to define to define a continuous function. Okay? Continuous function. Am I spelling it that correct? Probably not. Doesn't matter. Okay. A continuous function loosely defined is a function I can draw without lifting my hands. Okay? If I can draw this thing okay that's not really a function but that's continuous I can draw it without lifting my hand so it's continuous now I can only draw something without lifting my hand when what I expect to happen actually happens so for example as I'm drawing as I'm expecting that to when I come to 4 to be at 16 on the y-axis if if that didn't happen let's say all of a sudden I had to be there okay I had to jump over there then that would not be continuous okay but since what I'm expect to happen actually happens I can draw this continuously okay if this does not happen if what I expect to happen does not actually happen there's a discontinuity and that we saw in our other example okay that looked like this with an example that looked like this okay where when x is equal to 1 y was supposed to be 2 and it was this function that didn't look like a straight line but it simplified to become a straight line okay and here we can see the denominator x may not equal 1 if x is equal to 1 we get 0 in the denominator and uh, therefore it's undefined so x may never equal 1 so as I'm drawing this what I'm expecting to happen at this point doesn't happen I'm not allowed to get to that point I must lift up my pen put it down after 1 and then only continue I can't draw this line without lifting my hand okay so this is an example of a discontinuity okay so fx has a discontinuity t at x equal to 1. 
Now, at this point, I do want to say that what I'm explaining now falls outside the scope of this course. So if you didn't understand, it's not really that important, but it is important once you get to calculus at varsity level. Then this becomes very, very important. But um, the reason why I explain it like that is because this helps me to evaluate limits. Okay, what do I mean? Well, notice here that in order to solve this, this one's answer was 16. I could have found that answer 16 without doing a table. All I needed to do was simply to substitute in 4. In other words, what I expected to happen was equal to what actually happened. And in other words, in a continuous function, is the f or a function is continuous when this is true when what I expect to happen, this is what I expect to happen, is equal to what actually happens. Okay, in other words, I substitute the value I'm approaching. Okay, if it is discontinuous, discontinu it, it, there might be various circumstances. Okay, so this is one example of a discontinuity. Here's another example of a discontinuity. Okay is another example. In order for me to draw a hyperbola, I, I cannot reach the asymptote. I have to lift up my hand and then continue on this side. This is another example of a discontinuity. Uh, let's call this one hx is equal to 1 over x has a discontinuity at x equal to 0. There's the discontinuity. Okay, And in this case, the limit when x tends to 0 of hx of hx does not exist okay I'm not going to go into why it does not exist but all I can briefly say is then when I come from this side I go upwards when I come from this side I tend downwards so in other words if I'm trying to get to zero from the bottom I get a different answer than trying to get to zero from the top okay but again, it falls outside the scope of um, our course. We will only stick to this type of discontinuities called a removable discontinuity. This one is called a removable discontinuity. Okay, and the reason why it's called a removable discontinuity, well, these might, maybe there's two reasons. One reason is when I draw the line, I just remove the one point that is not included. Okay, another reason, and probably the reason I think it's called removable discontinuity, is because the expression here can be simplified, okay, to not have a discontinuity. For example, we saw that x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 when we simplified that became x plus 1 now there is no more discontinuity in the denominator okay in other words if I have now x squared if I were to evaluate this limit let's say the limit of x tending to 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 I would love to just substitute but I can't because there's a discontinuity. So what am I going to have to do? Well, let's remove the discontinuity. Let's simplify the expression. So this becomes x plus 1, x minus 1, divided by x minus 1. This cancels with that. So this is just the limit, the limit of x tending to 1 of x plus 1 and this time I can just substitute and that's brilliant because then I get 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and that is indeed what we see here that what I expect to happen as I'm trying to get to 1 whether from the top or the bottom both times I would have gotten to 2 if it wasn't for this pesky little x minus 1 in the denominator I'm not allowed to get to 1 okay so the that's how we are going to evaluate limits in this course if it is possible to substitute we will substitute if it's not possible to substitute we will simplify and then substitute easy as that see you in the next video